Welcome everybody, today it's time for another bad raw file into a good picture edit. So I'm gonna take this raw file right here, which is what shot through a fence, a lot of distractions, a lot of blurry leaves on every side, and I'm gonna take it and actually turn it into a very mysterious, very focused, but also very artistic picture just like this, while of course showing you every single step from start to finish. Alright, first of all, there's just too many distractions, especially here on the right, so I'm just gonna crop that away. I don't mind some leaves being here in the photo, because that actually frames the picture, and it would be impossible to get rid of them anyways, so I'm just gonna leave it like this, and yeah, I think that cropping works a lot better, maybe just a little bit less here on the right. Then, you know, I thought about going into black and white, because that would make everything a little bit more simple and it would also make these fence lines less distracting but at the end I really like this kind of color this warmish color of the fur as well as these leaves so I'm actually gonna keep it in color for now maybe I'm gonna turn it into black and white but anyways let's get started with editing and first thing I'm gonna do here is raise the shadows so I can bring the contrast slider quite a bit to the right and you see the difference from before and even just a little bit of contrast contrast, it really brings out the color, it makes everything pop and it definitely makes it look a lot better. I don't really want to go too far with it, maybe I'm even gonna bring up the blacks so I can bring the contrast slider even more to the right without actually clipping anything or making everything too contrasty and that's really a nice technique that you can use to uh, kind of go farther with the contrast. Then the whites, I always like to bring up the whites, however I'm not gonna go quite as far as I usually do, usually I like to go uh, to the right before anything clips, but as you see here that's way too much and it completely ruins the picture and uh, neither the less it also ruins this darkish, gloomy, mysterious mood. So I'm just gonna go a little bit into the plus here to give a bit more differentiation and a bit more dynamic. So here is before and here is after. Then the highlight slider, don't really think that we have to change anything there, so let's just leave that at zero. Then clarity, I think I'm just gonna add a little bit here, yeah that looks pretty good. Then the color temperature is a very important slider and here you just wanna look whatever looks best, it's of course very dependent on every single picture, uh, but don't go for the neutral look necessarily, because for example in this photo I really think a bit of a warmish, more towards the orangish look right, like this works just a lot better for the overall look and for the overall overall mood of the photo, so just play around with this of course, very different from picture to picture. But I think I'm pretty much done here with the basics adjustments, so let's just quickly see from before to after, and you see it's just a little bit more of a punch, a lot more contrast, and I do like these adjustments. Then let's go down to the tonal curve, and here a thing that I like to do is just go into the plus highlight, and what this will do is just get uh, these very bright parts a little bit brighter and uh, if you look at some of these leaves it does change it a little bit and I do like it a bit better. Then the rest of these sliders just play around with it, stick with whatever you like best. Very very different from picture to picture once again and yeah I think that looks pretty well. So let's just see before the tonal curve, after, just a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more of a punch. So let's go down to the next tool, HSL tool doesn't really have too big of an impact, so I'm not gonna mess with that at all. Split toning, if you have anything with a lot of colorful light in it, or maybe a sunset, a landscape or anything like that, it is worth to play around with, but with a wildlife picture just as this one, it probably won't work, let's just see it regardlessly. And yeah, I mean I don't wanna add too much uh, more orange here, and I don't really wanna add any other color either. Maybe I'm actually gonna go into the blues here, just a little bit of saturation, and you know split toning adds color very differently than the temperature slider. The temperature slider really adds color very evenly over the entire picture, whereas split toning just adds color more 
more in the highlights than in the shadows. So a little bit of a difference, but really nothing game changing. Then let's go down to the detail tool and this only matters if you want to print your picture or of course if you want to display it on a large monitor or anything like that. But for the overall mood, it really doesn't matter. So I might as well just leave that out to save some time. By the way, I've made plenty of tutorials where I explain the detail, HSL and all of the other tools and sliders that I don't cover here in this video. Just check the links in the description down below. But uh, yeah, I'm really just focusing on the overall look and the mood of this photo rather on the detail adjustments. The effects tools, however, here you can add vignetting and especially if you have a lot of distractions or even if you just want to set the mood, make the more attention towards the center, it can really, really work to add some vignetting. So here, once again, I want to go for a very moody, dramatic picture. So I'm going to add quite a lot of vignetting right here. And you know, you don't want to go a hundred, otherwise you're going to end up with a kind of a circle like this. But I think I might even go to around minus 40. You could also play around with the feather to make sure that the edge is nice and natural looking. So yeah, before any vignetting and here's after. So then camera calibration once again doesn't really have the biggest impact so I'm just gonna leave that out. And with that said we're pretty much done with the global adjustment so now is really where the fun and the picture deciding part comes in which is the local adjustments. And first thing I want to do here or pretty much what I do in all of my pictures if it's needed is to grab an adjustment brush and add some more additional vignetting in just some parts and the adjustment brush is great for something like that because you don't have to add uh, vignetting over all corners equally as you do with the effects tool. You can really just add some vignetting in one part in one corner if that's just what you want but here I really want to emphasize everything even more and just find tune some of that to get really the main attraction directly on his face. So let me just do that here, maybe even grab another one for the top right here and make everything even darker, even gloomier and even more dramatic. And I think that works actually pretty well. Maybe I'm gonna grab another one just for the very back and make this almost completely black. And you have to be careful if you do such uh, heavy adjustments because it can very easily be too much. But for this particular photo, I really think it actually works really Really, really well. So let me just finish that up right here and yeah I think that's pretty much it. You can also press down the alt key to get the minus adjustment brush and maybe get rid of some adjustments you've done previously. So yeah I think that works pretty well and from before that adjustment brush and here's after even more vignetting, even more attention on the actual eye and once again a little bit less distractions through all of these out of focus elements. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is to grab a graduated filter and oftentimes in your picture you will have one side where there's a lot more exposure, a lot more lighting uh, hitting the actual subject than the other, whether it be wildlife, landscapes or cityscape or pretty much anything. And a way to, I found to emphasize that and even to complexify the whole lighting scheme more is to grab a graduated filter over one side and go a a little bit into the plus exposure and you really want to make sure that you have a very soft edge and you don't want to do it too much at all, really just a very tiny bit and then grab another graduated filter in parallel over the other side of the photo also with a very soft edge and this time go into the minus exposure and that way you will just get a nice graduation from one side to the other and you will kind of emphasize the whole lighting scheme that is already there and the other half not being as bright and that way you really get some nice differentiation as you see here this part of his face is really bright 
light going into the medium, going into the kind of shadowy area on the left. And of course, as you go farther up, you go into almost pitch black areas. So let's go on with the next step, which is start from burning. And for that, I really like to use the rail filter. You could use the jasmine brush with it as well, but I really like the rail filter because you have the maximum amount of control. And also by bringing the feather here to 100, if I show you here, uh, all of the adjustments will look very natural and have a very soft edge and it's a lot smaller than the actual filter. So that's definitely not a look that you can represent one to one with the adjustment brush. So anyways, before I add any dodge and burning, uh, you just want to uh, look at the picture and see where is it kind of boring, where do you want to emphasize some of the lighting, whether it be in plus or negative exposure. And then of course, just drag a rail filter over that part and go either into the plus or negative exposure. So it, that way you once again complexify the lighting scheme even more. And for example, here you see the right part maybe it could use a bit more exposure. So let me just see by dragging the filter over here, going a little bit into the plus exposure. And I think that works pretty well. You can of course always adjust that then just right click duplicate, maybe a bit of a small one on the top right there and right click duplicate, you know, just a little bit of exposure in some other areas. And that's a great filter thing about the rail filter. Once again, you can just adjust every single filter without having any effect on the other one. And of course, just right click duplicate and drag them around to your likings. So maybe the right part of this uh, nose right here, a little bit more exposure than on the left and of course always if you have a wildlife picture it can work to brighten up the eye of course you don't want to make him look like this but um, just a little bit more exposure in the eye can often help to give even more attention directly towards the eye. So I think that works pretty well right here. And um, let's see, is there any other plus exposures that I want to do? Maybe just a very tiny one right there. Right click duplicate. And you know, it is really a lot of different possibilities you can use and you could even zoom in one to one and really go detailed and crazy with it. But I'm going to keep it relatively short and compact for the video. So once you are done with the plus exposure filters, then you just want to go into the minus exposure filters. And once again, also go into the lighting scheme, but this time go on the already dark and in the shadow kind of uh, areas of your photo and just emphasize that even more to get more contrast, more mood and more differentiation from light to dark. So once again, let's just add a few filters over here. You could even overlap some parts of plus and negative exposure filters. Maybe drag another one here in the background and actually quite a big one in the foreground right here. Once again, the options are really endless and uh, there's so much to be done to complexify your photo. So let's just see maybe another one over there and maybe just a very small one right here to get some nice differentiation. And whenever I think that I'm done with a photo, I just take a few seconds and look at it and really check out every spot and see if there's anything I still want to do. And I might even grab another plus exposure rail filter just for this area, which is over the dark parts. But as long as you don't do it too much, it can also give some nice differentiation within the dark and shadow areas. So in terms of dodge and burning, I'm really happy here. Maybe I just went a bit too far with this filter right there. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm actually really happy with this picture. It turned out a lot better than I originally thought. And of course, if we go here into the history and see where we started that with the raw file. If I would have stumbled on this picture about a year ago even, then I would have probably deleted this photo. But now since I know what is possible with Lightroom, I can make this into a relatively relatively interesting and definitely artistic and a much better picture than before. And you know, if you want the best possible picture, of course, you also have to start with a great draw file. But I think it's still astonishing uh, when you see what is possible with uh, editing just from before to after and what you can adjust 
and how you can make such a boring but distracting picture and turn it into a very artistic and mysterious kind of picture with its own charm. So I hope you could take away some tips or techniques or at the very least some inspiration to go back to your old pictures and try to edit them and turn them into a good picture that you previously thought not possible. Please be sure to subscribe, I upload multiple videos every single week, uh, Lightroom tutorials, landscape edits and all sorts of photography related videos. By the way, if you want to see more bad raw files into good pictures edits then check out the link in the description. But that was it for me today, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.